It's a big world out there, but there's one thing we can all agree on. We want to look good in our photos. Obviously, that also includes the subjects that you photograph, because if they look good, you look good too, and that's what's important. Now, of all the tools and techniques to beautify your subject, there's just one that reigns supreme. That is frequency separation. So let's break down how you can use this technique, some extra steps to make it even better, and I'll even give you a free tool to help speed up this process along the way. Now, frequency separation is the act of separating the texture from the color on your subject's face. Now, that sounds really hard and complicated, but there's a really simple tool to make that happen. But before we access that tool, we need to go and do all of our blemish removal first so that we don't get any weird results later in the project. In this case, our subject has some acne that we could go and clear up. The easiest tool for the job in this case would be the remove tool. Accessing the remove tool by pressing J, or you can find it in nested underneath these spot healing brushes and things like that. We want to do this non-destructively, so I'll click on the new layer icon and call this to removal. Now up in the options bar, we'll make sure that sample all layers is enabled and remove after each brush stroke is disabled so we can just go and paint over all the blemishes in one shot. We'll leave the mode set to auto and now we can go ahead and begin painting over any blemishes. So anything underneath that pink highlight will be removed. It's pretty self-explanatory here and it does a great job at removing things along edges. So feel free to paint outside of your subject's face a little bit if needed. This is gonna take a second to do, so I'll just meet you when this is all complete. Complete. Once you've painted over all the areas you want to remove, make sure your removal layer is selected and press enter on your keyboard so Photoshop will now go and get to work at removing everything beneath those pink highlights. With that good to go, take a second look over your subject. If there's any other blemishes to remove, go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go and add a few extra touch-ups just in areas that I think could look a bit better. With our first phase complete, turning that removal layer on and off, all of our subject's main blemishes are gone and our frequency separation is ready to be applied now. What we're left with at this point is all the natural texture of our subject's skin, minus any acne and blemishes. So at this point, we'll go ahead and duplicate and merge our layers so we have a new base image to begin with. I'll hold Command or Control, click on the background layer and the removal layer, press Command or Control J, and then Command or Control E to merge them. I'll call this to Removal Merged. And now we're ready to apply frequency separation. I'm going to first show you how to do this manually yourself, and then I'll show you how to use the actions that you can download below this video for free that'll just speed up this whole process for you. So to do this manually, we want to first duplicate this merged layer two times. We'll press Command or Control J one time and then two times. We'll call the topmost duplicated layer to texture and the bottommost duplicated layer to blur. With the blur layer selected, I'll first disable the texture layer, and then I want to add a slight Gaussian blur to this layer. Going up to filter and down here to blur and Gaussian blur, we want to add a blur radius where the textures are just out of view. So obviously we have tons of texture here. As we increase this up, we just want those textures to be slightly out of view. So now our subject's skin looks perfectly smooth. So around 10 pixels in this photo looks good. It'll be different for every image. I'll click OK. Now we'll enable the texture layer once again, click on it and go up to image and down here to apply image. And then we'll set the blending mode down here to subtract and we'll set the target layer to blur. And what we should see is this weird looking version of the photo. And basically this is all of the texture from our subject skin that we'll be placing onto the texture layer. Make sure that the scale and offset are at two and 128 and we'll click okay. Now we need to get rid of all of this gray, but keep the texture. So we'll just change the layer blending mode of the texture layer down here to linear light which will keep all of that nice contrast from the texture, but then remove the gray. So if I turn these two layers on and off, nothing has happened to our photo. But what we have done is separated the texture from the colors of our subject. That way we can click on the blur layer and apply all of our extra blurring adjustments to smooth things and balance out the colors. Now, if all these steps seemed a little bit overwhelming or too time consuming for you, I totally understand. So you can grab the actions that I created for this process down in the description below. They're totally 
free and it will just get you up and running with the blur and texture layer with a single click so you don't gotta mess around with this process in the future. But anyways, once you have these layers created, whether you did it manually or with that action down below, I'll click on the blur layer and now we want to manually select different parts of our subject's face to add extra blur. This will help to smooth out any of the shadows and the hot spots and things like that. So I'll access the lasso tool by pressing L and I'll set the feather to something like 10 pixels, for example. While that blur layer is still selected, I'll just go and circle around an area that I want to add some smoothing onto to level out these tones a bit. I'll now go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur to blur the area on the blur layer within the selection. So I'll increase the radius here and notice how it just blends in those shadows really nicely. So that is without the blur adjustment and that is with the blur adjustment. It just makes a nice even skin tone for us. We don't want to go overboard, otherwise it's going to look unrealistic. So play around until you're happy with the result. This looks good for me here and I'll click OK. Now we need to go and repeat this process over and over, but it's going to be really time consuming and annoying to keep going to that filter adjustment. So I want to show you how to set up a really easy keyboard shortcut. Before we do that, I'll just create a new lasso selection for a different area of the frequency separation. And I want to now create a shortcut for my Gaussian blur. We can create custom shortcuts in Photoshop by going to edit and down to keyboard shortcuts. And in this menu, we'll just navigate to filter and then down into the blur section and look for Gaussian blur. In my case, the keyboard shortcut is shift command period. So that is what I can use to quickly access that filter. You can type in whatever you want just in this box for your shortcut. But once that's set, I'll click OK. And now with the lasso selection, I'll reuse that shortcut still on the blur layer, pressing command or control shift and period in my case. And this accesses the Gaussian blur. So now I can go and apply that adjustment, click OK, and repeat this over and over without having to waste time going up to the filter menu. Again, using that shortcut, quickly accesses that adjustment and it really really speeds up our process here. So I'm going to repeat this in a couple different areas and then I'll meet you when it is complete because there's one final step that can really make a big difference in the final result. After going around your photo with the lasso tool and repeating in small areas at a time, adding that Gaussian blur as needed, taking care not to go over hard edges like the hairlines or things like that, otherwise you'll get some color bleeding, you'll end up with a really nice smoothing effect like this. But if there's any hot spots or weird areas that just aren't looking right in terms of color, such as blotchiness or harsh shadows, we can use the mixer brush as well to help blend things in further. This is something that we can do after we've applied our Gaussian blur adjustments. Clicking on the blur layer once again, we'll go to our brush tool, but we'll click and hold and find the mixer brush here. Clicking on that, we'll first clear out our brush by clicking this icon here, and then we want to choose a soft round brush. Essentially what this tool will do is allow us to click in an area and take that color and blend it in with other areas that we paint. So it's really useful to kind of dampen down shadows or get rid of any leftover blotchiness. For all of our settings here, we'll leave everything to 20%. So just type in 20% for all of these. And then while that blur layer is still selected, we can just go and paint over any areas we want to fix up the shadows or blotchiness in. So for example, if I click over here, because I sampled in the shadows, it darkens things down. But if I undo this, bring down my brush size and then paint from a lighter area, now it's going to add a bit of lightning to those shadows instead. So you hopefully get the idea of how this can work, starting in the light area and then painting over the shadows to lighten them up as you'd like. Obviously it goes the opposite way if you click in the shadows and drag into the light, that will darken things instead. But this is a really easy way to just add a little bit of extra blending and professionalism to your subjects. It's almost like a dodging and burning, but with a little bit less effort. It works especially well over little hot spots like this where we can click in a darker, more well-exposed area and then paint over just to bring down those hot spots nicely. I'll do the same thing up here, just paint over, bring down those bright areas a bit, and you can repeat this as needed. I'll meet you when it is all complete. Now I've finished with my mixer brush just to smooth out some of the shadows, lighten up some areas, and bring down any of the hot spots. Now this completes our workflow, so let's take a look at that before and after. Looking at our original image here, this was without blemish removal. Then we applied our blemish removal and things were looking pretty good. And this gave us the base point for our frequency separation. From this merged layer, we then duplicated it twice to create our blur and texture and then applied those adjustments to create the skin smoothening effect 
without sacrificing the texture of our subject so they don't look like porcelain. So looking at the total before and after here, you can see the amazing result that we get. And we can apply these same techniques at varying intensities based on how far you want to take those retouching results. Now, if you haven't already, remember to download that free frequency separation action in the description below. It'll save you a lot of time with this in your future projects. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button down below. I hope you can find something useful here to use in your next project. And with that, I'll see you next time.